Hi everyone, how are you? I hope all of you are doing well. Today I am going to discuss the chapter nutrition in plants. In this heterotropic nutrition we are going to discuss about autotropic nutrition I already discussed in part 1. If you haven't gone through that previous part, please go through that part and subscribe our channel Nirja Education. So now we will discuss the heterotropic nutrition. In last video I have discussed that photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is occurring in green plants because one green colored pigment chlorophyll is present in that one that is why photosynthesis is occurring in green plants. In this case some of the plants they don't have chlorophyll in that one so they can't conduct photosynthesis the photosynthesis will not occur in such type of plants so this type of plants and some living organisms and human beings and all of them depend green plants for their food this non green plants living organism like human beings and animals depend green plants for food this type of organisms are known as heterotrophs and such mode of nutrition is known as heterotropic nutrition i will repeat once again that means in non green plants and other living organisms such as human beings and animals they can't prepare the food by themselves because they don't have chlorophyll in them so they depend on other plants for their food such type of plants are known as heterotrophs and and animals and also there are also known as heterotrophs and such types of nutrition is known as heterotropic mode of nutrition then I want to ask you one question in some of the plants you can see uh, red leaves and other colored leaves also whether in that plants photosynthesis occur because I told only green plants can conduct photosynthesis or in green plants only the photosynthesis is occurring. Then what about that plants? Yes, that plants also photosynthesis is occurring. Actually in that plants the other colored pigment are dominating. The other colored pigments are dominating. That is why you can see red color, pink color and everything. But in that also chlorophyll is present in that one. So that they can conduct photosynthesis. But in heterotrophs they don't have chlorophyll and they can't conduct photosynthesis. Now we will discuss the different types of heterotropic nutrition. The different types of heterotropic nutrition are saprophytic, parasitic, insectivorous and symbiotic modes of nutrition that are saprophytic, parasitic, insectivorous and symbiotic modes of nutrition. First we will discuss about saprophytic nutrition. In this modes of nutrition, the plants derive nutrients from dead and decaying matter. They are known as saprophytes and this type of modes is known as saprophytic mode of nutrition. These saprophytes are getting food from dead and decaying matter. I will tell you one experiment where you take one bread piece and sprinkle some water on it and cover it in a plastic bag and keep it for some days then after some days you can see some patches on that one actually these patches are fungi this is an example for saprophytic mode of nutrition this is bread mold so some of the saprophytes are mushrooms bread mold all these are example for saprophytic mode of nutrition actually what is happening here is that these dead plants these saprophytes convert the dead plants and animals into a solution form and they will absorb the nutrients from that solution that from that solution act this is happening in this saprophytic nutrition i will explain this once again in saprophytic nutrition the saprophytes are getting nutrients from dead and decaying matter they will convert the dead and decaying matter into a solution form and after that they will absorb the nutrients from the solution 
some of the example for these saprophytes are mushrooms bread mold etc next we are going to the second mode of heterotrophic nutrition that is parasitic mode of nutrition in which the plants depend on the other green plant for the food that means they are deriving the food and nutrients from the green plants so from which these plants getting the food that plants are known as that means the green plants are known as host that the green plants which providing food for that plants they are known as host this parasitic plants are deriving the food from the host plants this parasitic plants can be divided into two total parasitic plants and partial parasitic plants in total parasitic plants this parasites derive the food the nutrients completely from the host plant only they are the photosynthesis is not occurring in that plants example is cascuta rafflesia etc are example for total parasitic plant have you heard about this rafflesia plant rafflesia flower this is a flower this is the largest flower in the world rafflesia is the largest flower in the world next we are going to the partial parasitic plants in partial parasitic plants actually the photosynthesis is occurring but they are deriving the nutrients and water from the host plants in partial parasitic plants photosynthesis is occurring but they are getting water and minerals from the host plants example are mistletoe loranthus etc are example for this partial parasitic plants this partial parasitic plants have roots they penetrates the roots into the trunk of the tree and they will derive the water and minerals from this trunk both the parasites that means if they are total parasitic or partial parasitic that will destroy the host plants because they are getting all the nutrients from the host plant only so that will destroy the host plants i hope all of you have understood this one i will explain this once again parasitic mode of nutrition in which the plants depend on the green plants for their nutrition the green plants which provide the food for the plants are known as host this host uh, this parasitic mode can be divided into two that is total parasitic plants and partial parasitic plants in total parasitic plants the plants getting the nutrients food and everything from the host plants only but in partial parasitic plants they are conducting uh, the photosynthesis the photosynthesis is occurring in partial pa partial parasitic plants but they are getting the nutrients and water from the host plants example for partial parasitic plants are mistletoe and lorna and thus and for total parasitic plants cascuta and rafflesia this rafflesia is the largest flower in the world next we are going to the insectivorous plants this insectivorous plants actually the photosynthesis is occurring but they are living in a nitrogen deficient soil for the proper growth of a plant nitrogen is an important mineral but these insectivorous plants are living in a nitrogen deficient soil so they will get the enough minerals from this insects only they will trap the in insects and they get proper minerals from this insects venus flytrap and pitcher plant are some of the example for this insectivorous plants here you can see the The image of this Venus flytrap. See, it is having one hair-like structure. Some of the hair-like structures are there. When the insect touches this hair-like structure, the leaves snap shut, and the insect will be trapped inside the leaves. After that, this Venus flytrap will secrete the digestive juices, and insects will be digested, and this plant will get nutrients from these insects. next example is pitcher plant here also you can see the image of the pitcher plant in pitcher plant the leaves are modified into a jug like structure down you can see the jug like structure the apex is modified into a lid like structure when the insects sit on this jug like structure the lid will close the opening of then closing of the lid will occur when the insects sits on that jug like structure that is on the 
picture what will happen the lid will close and after that the digestive juices will be secreted and this digestive juice will digest the insects inside this picture from this insects they will get the nutrients so these are the some of the example for this insectivorous plants next we are going to the symbiotic mode of nutrition in this mode of nutrition two organism live together and share their shelter and nutrition this type of more nutrition is known as symbiotic mode of nutrition or symbiosis actually symbiosis symbiosis is a greek word meaning is living together the meaning of symbiosis is living together this is a greek word so symbiotic mode of nutrition means the organism live together and share the shelter and nutrients one of the example for this symbiotic mode of nutrition are lichens lichens are the living organism in which fungi and green plants live together that means the green algae green algae they are having chlorophyll so they conduct photosynthesis and prepare food and lichens this fungi this fungi will get nutrients from this green algae instead of that while this fungi will provide this fungi will provide shelter to the green algae it is difficult for the algae to survive in harsh condition but with the help of this fungi this green algae can survive in harsh condition also so this is one of the example for symbiotic relationship this fungi and green algae together they are known as lichens the green algae prepare food for the fungi and fungi provide shelter for this green algae the next one is rhizobium and leguminous plants peas beans etc are example for this leguminous plants Uh, the plants for, for proper growth they need lot of nitrogen in our atmospheric nitrogen is present but plants can't absorb the atmospheric nitrogen they will get it from soil only so the rhizobium will convert the atmospheric nitrogen into soluble form and they will mix with the soil so that the plants can absorb this nitrogen from the soil for this purpose this rhizobium will help the leguminous plants this this rhizobium is also known as nitrogen fixing bacteria the other name of this rhizobium is that nitrogen fixing bacteria because it fixes the nitro atmospheric nitrogen it convert the atmospheric nitrogen into a soluble form so that the plants can absorb the nitrogen instead of that the leguminous plants give shelter and nutrients to this rhizobium this is also one of an one of the example for this symbiotic relationship next we are going to the last topic that is soil replenishing you know that already we have discussed the plants need lot of nutrients and they will absorb the nutrients from soil so that the fertility of the soil is declining declining means decreasing so we have to restore the fertility of the soil that is why the farmers are adding manure and fertilizers to the soil so that to replenish the fertility of the soil so they will add fertilizers manure and rhizobium instead of that they will alternately they will plant leguminous plants also already we have discussed in leguminous plants root nodules you can find this rhizobium so rhizobium will help to fix the atmospheric nitrogen and it will increase the fertility of the soil so in this video we have discussed the different types of heterotrophic nutrition that is parasitic saprophytic insectivorous and symbiotic mode of nutrition and soil replenishment also we have discussed i hope all of you have understood all this one thank you